Well, I know I'm not the first, but I also wanted to say welcome to Obi-Wan this morning. If you are new today and you have to not know me, my name's Chris. I'm one of the pastors here. Hey, as we're starting out, I want you to be thinking about some things in your life that personally fulfill you. We're all different, so what are some things in your life that personally fulfill you? As I share some of mine, I want you to be thinking about some of yours. Um, man, I love the ocean. The ocean fulfills me. I could just stare at it, and I start to feel like uh, something's filling inside of me. Uh, again, I could stare at it for hours. I can be walking it. I love the sound of the waves. I'm actually very thankful that uh, God has called us to a place that, that has an ocean. Uh, some of you might not know this, but I lived a lot of my life growing up in a military family, or even Robin and I have moved places that we d wouldn't choose to, but God called us to go be a pastor at a certain church there. Um, and while I didn't hate places per se, there was places where I didn't fit in or I just felt lackluster about the area. So I really, really love, so just in and of itself, I love San Diego, love being in San Diego, living here here even fulfills me. One of the things I shared last week that I really uh, fulfills me quite a bit is my family. I love my wife. I love my kids. And when something else that I love that personally fulfills me also connects with my family, that's just like a double or even triple amazing for me. In fact, uh, you'll see a picture right now of uh, of uh, uh, ocean love and also family coming together. Adam, you can show that. That's us. Um, that's me and my family. We are scuba diving in the ocean. Man, it's so fulfilling to be down there. Um, how many of you get excited when you see pictures like that? How many of you are fearful when you see pictures like that? You're like, no, the claustrophobic in you is coming out. Can I tell you, for those of you that think it's claustrophobic, that it's not claustrophobic. It's more freeing than ever because you can see everything. But anyway, this was just an awesome day of having my family with me, and we're in a place that all four of us love, enjoying God's creation. I love being fulfilled. I love being fulfilled. And guess what? I know that you love it too. It feels good when we're personally fulfilled. It's satisfying and it can bring happiness. In fact, uh, look, look, listen to this verse in the Proverbs. Um, I, I just want to get, I don't know where God gets this reputation from of being this killjoy or this person that squashes fun at, at, at any corner. It's like you're having fun with your life. No, like that's just not how it is. God loves when we're fulfilled. Look at this verse in Proverbs 15. A happy heart makes the face cheerful. Say that with me. Happy a happy heart makes the face cheerful, but heartache crushes the spirit. A happy heart is a good thing. It's a good thing. Guess what? It's also contagious. Uh, can you show the, the video, Adam? <laughs> Blong. <laughs> so good through the laughs and uh, through the mouths and laughter of babies right the innocence right guys a fulfilled heart is a cool experience as a father i love seeing my kids fulfilled and happy and i also love seeing when uh, that and robin as well in fact something speaking of laughing something that's fulfilling for us as a family when we're just sitting together late at night laughing about nothing sometimes. You met those stages where you get so tired and you don't even know why you're laughing. Have you ever experienced that before? You start laughing because someone else starts laughing and then you can't stop. Um, if I, as an imperfect person, love this, 
I can only imagine how God feels because he does it way better. He's perfect. He does it way better. I think it makes God's heart happy to see you fulfilled. I think it puts a smile on his face to see a smile on your face. And since all of us are different, there, there are different things that fulfill us. Whether job goals or meaningful relationships, a hobby, better physical health, traveling, continuing education, moments in nature like I just talked about, or whatever fulfills you, I hope that you continue to have fulfillment in your life. And as I shared last week, Jesus wants us to be fulfilled too. Look what it says in John 10. I have come that they may have life and have it to the what? Say it. Have it to the what? Have it to the full. So if God, so if it makes God smile to see you fulfilled, and if Jesus wants us to have a full life, what would Jesus undo? What would he undo? Here's what he knew. The chase for personal fulfillment can get so fierce that it becomes unhealthy. It becomes unhealthy when it becomes unchecked, and it's only, hear this, about us. Say the word only. When it's only about us. Like we talked about last week, Jesus knew it would be so tempting to only, say it again, only think of ourselves. So he points us to God, to God and encourages us to love him back. In addition, in order to keep personal fulfillment from going unchecked and too far, Jesus points us to others as well. And that's what we're going to cover today. Jesus asks us to not only love God, but to also love others. You know, I, I shared this last week. Typically, a body of water that just receives but doesn't have an outflow becomes stagnant and very unhealthy. Isn't it interesting that the difference between healthy water and unhealthy water is simply that one of them does not have an outflow? And because Jesus loves us and cares for us so much, to keep our personal fulfillment from getting so fierce and to keep it in check so that it doesn't spiritually and emotionally keep us unhealthy, he wants us healthy, guys. Jesus says, hey, love others. But it's just like, well, what does loving others mean? Is it just like something vague? Or Jesus tells us in Scripture of how we can love others. Let's look in Philippians 2. It, it gives more specifics. It says this, Not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of the others. I like how it's worded in the New Living Translation, so let's look at that translation. Look what it says, and you repeat it with me when I say it. Don't look out only say it again only don't look out only for your own interests but take an interest in others too now does it say sorry guys when you become a christ follower you're screwed <laughs> you can't have any interest anymore you can't have any interest it doesn't say that it says take an interest in others also, see, personal fulfillment is when we align our lives with our interest. And there, again, there's nothing wrong with it. I just covered that. But Jesus wants us to align our lives with the interest of others in mind as well. So it doesn't go too far. So it's not unchecked and become very unhealthy where life is just all about us. I mean, think about someone. I, I really want you to think about this right now. Think of someone who, who, in your life who had your interest in mind. How did that make you feel? Important? Valued? Lo probably it made you feel loved, right? I, I, I've had those happen. I remember it was probably mine and, mine and Robin's, one of our worst financial struggle times. 
And I was, I was walking out of a meeting we were at, and someone comes up to me and hands me a card. I go back to my car, and there's $500 in that card. I'm like, wow, someone thought of me during my struggle time. Someone thought of me. Someone took an interest in me. I have, I've had a pastor do the same, where he just... He kept my interest in mine, and he invested in me. He believed in me. Uh, he, I still consider him my spiritual father to this day. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that he took an interest in me. He saw, he saw something in me. He valued me. He invested into me. In fact, especially early on in my ministry, a lot of my aspirations were through his example. Because he just meant, I was like, wow, he values me. He, See, Jesus wants us to keep the interest of others in mind so that others feel loved too. Doesn't it feel good when we're valued, when we feel important, when it's like, wow, someone thought of us? He wants us to do that for others too. This is why it's important to not let personal fulfillment go unchecked. Because if it goes too far, we're expending ourselves, say again with me, only on our own interest and don't have the time or energy to keep in mind the interests of others, let alone do something for them. And when personal fulfillment goes too far, it can actually foster unhealthy relationships. Think, think about it for a moment, whether you've experienced it before or if you've seen it through someone else's eyes, uh, someone that it, where it's just about them. It can, even if it's on accident, it can become a very self-centered relationship where people accidentally use or manipulate people just to get what they want. Or it can become very superficial. When, when, when they're discouraged, when they're down, you, you better be there. And, and, and it lacks commitment on the other end when someone else needs that person. Or it can cause unrealistic expectations or, or even pressure. Like, like to, when, when, you, when you feel like you have to please someone all the time because of their personal fulfillment. I mean, there's many examples, right, when it's just, when it's just one person. Think of, think of spouses that only, again, only, right, only think of their own interest. It's probably, they, they probably feel stuck at that point. Or like I just shared, a one-sided friendship or, or parents that really never spend time with their kids or adult kids only calling their parents when they want something from their parents or the boss that's only thinking about the bottom line and not the employees or the employee that's only thinking about the paycheck and not thinking about the good of the company. Or how about this one? If you're a sports fan, you've probably have seen this happen before. Money has put together several all-star teams, and then that all-star team doesn't even make the playoffs. Why? Because they were only thinking of themselves. They were only thinking of their stats. They weren't learning how to work as a team. But man, when both parties take an interest in others, now think of uh, uh, spouses that are thinking of their interest but also thinking of the interest of the other or friendships that are doing that or parents and kids that are doing that or bosses and employees bosses thinking of their employees too and the employees thinking of their bosses and co-workers or uh, 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 you know what sometimes the team that wins the championship isn't the best team they just knew how to work as a team because they were thinking about each other. Do you see why it's important to not let personal fulfillment go unchecked and why Jesus says, hey, I'm pointing you to others too. Keep their interests in mind as well. In fact, let me ask you a question. And I, I really want, seriously, I really want you to think about this. You don't have to answer it out loud, but think about it in your heart. In fact, I'm going to even give you a moment to do this. I'm going to even stop my message for a moment. And here's the question. Why do you love Jesus? Think about that for a moment. Why do you love Jesus? So take, take the moment. Think through that.
Now, I'm sure our specific, our specific answers are different because we're all different, but the general theme of why we love him is probably the same. Now, you might not say it this way, but the general theme is probably the same. Jesus took an interest in us. He didn't have to come down from the amazingness of heaven to a chaotic world to die for us. He didn't have to give his life. He didn't have to expend his life for us. Now go beyond his death and resurrection. He doesn't have to give us his wisdom and strength today when we need it. He doesn't have to forgive us. He doesn't have to give us his love, joy, peace, and kindness through his presence. He doesn't have to give us freedom, but he took an interest in us. That's why we love him. We might not say it that way, but that's why we love him. He took an interest in us. And because Jesus is such a good example of looking after our interest, the writer of Philippians encourages us to do this. Listen in. It says this in Philippians 2. In your relationships, does it say with God? Does it say in your relationship with God? No. It says in your relationship with people. With one another. It's getting serious here. I just thought I was supposed to love God. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. What was Jesus' mindset? Obi-Wan, I'm so glad you asked. And even if you didn't ask, I'm going to share it with you anyways. Let's, let's take a look in Philippians 2. Let's just continue right in Philippians 2. It's such a cool chapter in Philippians. Who, being in very nature God, talking about Jesus, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Man, he could have taken advantage of us when he was here. Rather... Instead of taking advantage of us, instead of taking advantage of his power, his, his godhood, rather he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. I think the writer of Philippians emphasized, hey, Jesus didn't obey and die by falling asleep one day because he got too old. He came and he died on a cross for you. This just wasn't a death that just happened. He didn't die in his sleep. He didn't die in a camel accident. <laughs> um, he, he died on a cross for us because he took interest in us. Jesus had a servant's mindset. Servicehood wasn't forced upon him. He loved people and took an interest in him, so he wanted to do it. Now, being a service doesn't mean you can't have boundaries. When you don't have boundaries or never pursue your own interests at the cost of others, that can start to become unhealthy the other way. Remember, receive and give. An inflow and an outflow. It's not also about give, 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 give without receiving. Something, I want you to listen to this. If something is filled once and then only has an outflow, it will eventually run out of water. Did you hear that? Isn't it interesting that for something to stay healthy, it has an inflow and an outflow? Receive, give. If something is only filled up once and all it has is an outflow, it will eventually run out of water. Same with you. You can't give what you don't have if you never have boundaries or if you don't ever focus on filling yourself up through your personal fulfillment or filling yourself up through the presence of God and connecting with him with his love, joy, peace, kindness, faithfulness, all those good things. But a servant is someone who keeps in mind the interest of others. Man, Maybe for you, for some of you, your career really personally fulfills you. That's awesome. Do you know what you can do? Start thanking God for that because you know how many people hate their career? Start thanking God like, thank you that my career personally fulfills me. 
And I think God loves that your career personally and fulfills you, but he's also saying, hey, keep in mind your boss's interest. Keep in mind your co-worker's interest. It's not just about getting ahead. There's a bigger purpose here. Or for some of you, maybe meaningful relationships are, you just, you get so fulfilled with meaning. That's great. That's awesome. And I, man, I personally love when meaningful relationships are good. There's nothing better when meaningful relationships are good. But God would also say, stay faithful when it's a struggle. In fact, look what it says in Galatians 6. What does it say? Carry each other's burdens. Toss them to the side. No, carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. What's the law of Christ? Love God. Love others. Love God. Love others. Do you know that most relationships become meaningful through difficulty? Anybody can party. Anybody can have a good time. Woo! Yeah, let's, let's go have a good time. Anybody can do that. A relationship becomes meaningful. It's like, I'm going to stick beside you even through this difficulty. Let's do this together. But it doesn't have to stop at, at, at meaningful relationships. It, it could be people you interact with at a restaurant or a store or a neighborhood. Maybe what personally fulfills you is continuing education. That's great. But maybe God wants you to take an interest in someone that's younger than you. Be a mentor to someone that's just starting out. You remember all the pitfalls and the highs and the lows. Or for some of you, if there's a hobby that you have and that personally fulfills you, that's great. Maybe you become a coach to invest in other people. Here, you want to know what? You want to know the only time that you don't have to keep in mind the interest of others. You ready for it? Give me a nod. Are you ready for it? The only time. Someone? Thank you, Stephanie. Okay? The only time you do not need to keep the interest of others in mind is when you're driving the 8, the 5, or the 805. Okay? Now, I'm just, I'm just teasing, actually. Just wanted to see if you were still awake. Okay? Even then, right? Even then. Um... All, all joking aside, I remember once that someone was confiding in me as their pastor a special, really cool special ministry they had, and we started talking about its origins and why that, how that ministry came about. And he confided in me and he said, you know, when I was first a Christ follower, I was just really angry and judgmental at people when they didn't have the talent that I had. I almost looked down at them. It's like, are you just not smart enough? Why, you, why do you not get this? And then one day, God lovingly and gently knocked on his heart and he said, why not instead of judging people for not having the talent you have, you give yourself to them and serve them? Can I remind you, I know you already know this. Can I remind you? That God has given you the talent you have, not so that you can judge others, but so that you can provide for yourself or provide for your family or serve other people in a way that other people can't. And he, I, I haven't talked to him lately, but when we were talking, he had a very successful ministry, just giving his talent in a way that most don't have, serving a lot of people, making a difference. He said there's been times where he's been able to talk about Jesus because of serving, or he's invited people to church be, because of serving. You see, when, when the pursuit of personal fulfillment goes unchecked, we miss out on the opportunity to make a difference in someone else's life. But hopefully, as, as Jesus whispers to us, like, hey, continue to be fulfilled. Continue to go after your pursuits. But keep in mind the interest of others. Hopefully, you'll find fulfillment by loving someone and making an impact in their life. Can I encourage you? And I think you already know this. It's just a reminder. It's a small world when it's just about us. 
But our purpose gets bigger when we love others. Let me say that again. It's a small world when it's just about us. But our purpose gets a lot bigger when we choose to love others. You know what? I I may be biased here, but I, I know being a pastor for over two decades, I know of a lot of churches and I've been a part of a lot of churches. I'm so thankful that we have a church that that thinks of others. I, there, are, there are a lot of great churches out there. There really, really are. But there are some churches out there where they only think about the people inside the four walls. And that's great. We have to do that. Obi-Wan does that well. But they're never thinking about the people in the city. And I'm so thankful to be a part of a church that has the mindset and the heart of Jesus that thinks about people in the city as well. In fact, this, this last uh, week, we had the opportunity, Adam, you can show the, the, the first picture. We had the opportunity to, um, we have a ministry at the Golden Living Center, and we're able to serve the senior residents of that center. But this time, we were able to serve the staff that serves the people at the Golden Living Center. So last Sunday, we had, you're seeing the picture right there, we had several people who just, all they did is take an interest in others. And we wrote out 50 handwritten thank you cards to thank the GLC staff for for loving these residents. And then if you wanna go to the next picture. And then on Friday, we had a few to several people make a home-cooked meal and then deliver it to the Golden Living Center staff just to say thank you. I really am so thankful to be a part of a church that has the mind and heart of Jesus. We have another ministry here. Many of you know it. It's our anti-human trafficking ministry. We call it Impact ATM. So if you ever hear that terminology, know that's our anti-human trafficking ministry. And we've had people that have been trafficked before that are now out of it where we're ministering to them. And every once in a while, they'll come up to someone on our Impact ATM team. They're like, why are you doing this? Like, not in a smart way, just like in a, like a shocked way. Like, why are you doing this? What are they saying? Why are you taking an interest in me? Because the only people that have typically taken an interest in me wanted something sexually from me. Why are you taking an interest in me? And one of our people on this t- team, one of their common answers, because they mean it from the bottom of their heart, when that gets asked is simply this. We believe there's a God that loves you so much that he sent us to tell you how much he loves you. We believe there's a God that loves you so much that he sent us to tell you how much he loves you. Guys, when we love others, specifically by, what is love? Is it just a feeling? No, when we love others by keeping their interests in mind, it's a great demonstration of the love and value God has for them. Jesus wants everyone to know his love and grace and place their hope in that. Now, keeping in mind the interest of others never guarantees they'll place their hope in Jesus, but guess what? It, it doesn't hurt. Do you want to know what does hurt? When people see a church that is all about them. That's when it hurts. It's like, wait a minute. Aren't you supposed to be the people that with love and and grace and forgiveness reach out to people even when they have different lifestyles, different opinions, different beliefs, different values than you? Aren't you supposed to be the people that actually, that's when it can hurt. Someone may not place their faith in Jesus because we, keep, because we keep their interests in mind and serve them, but it doesn't hurt. Because you know what? The more they see love displayed to them, the better chance they'll believe there's a God that loves them. Let me say that again. The more they see love displayed to them through us as Christ followers, the better chance they'll believe there's a God that loves them. 
guys, I really do hear my heart. And I hope it's God's speaking to you. And it's almost like beyond my words, like the Spirit's speaking to your heart right now. I hope you continue to experience fulfillment in your life. I really do. I hope that you continue to experience fulfillment in your life. Just don't stop at yourself. Just don't stop at yourself. There's too many people out there that need you and need to experience Jesus' love, hope, and grace through you. I'll say that again. There's too many people out there that need you and need to experience Jesus' love, hope, and grace through you. And so as we're, as we're starting to close, you can either do this right now or in maybe sometime tonight or this week, but we're gonna leave some time for you here in a little bit to connect with God. Adam, if you wanna put up the, the first question. What's a personal fulfillment that has the tendency to go unchecked for you? And guys, this question's not being asked to shame you or to make you feel guilty. It's just to make you be aware. And I'll share first, be vulnerable with you first so that you have the gift of going second so that you know this isn't about shame or guilt. I remember one time in a really busy season kind of complaining to God like, God, I just don't have a lot of time to spend with my family right now. And it was really funny, like a couple days later, I actually ended up having some time. And the first thing I go to do, and I, there's nothing wrong with this, I do this every once in a while, it's a way I can get fulfilled, I, I can get lost in a TV show, I turn on the TV, and God kind of lovingly reminded me of your complaint, my complaint. He was just, again, very lovingly, graciously, he's like, didn't you just a couple days ago complain <laughs> that you didn't have any time for your family? <laughs> I was like, oh God, thank you so much for that reminder, and I shut off the TV. Was it wrong to watch the TV show? No. So guys, we all have things where our pers personal fulfillments have the tendency to go unchecked. So what's a personal fulfillment for you that possibly has the tendency to go unchecked, okay? Number two, think through your relationships and your interactions with people in general. Have you noticed a pattern in which your personal pursuits have prevented you from opportunities to love or help someone else. Again, there's nothing wrong with having personal pursuits. We, we already covered that, but is, is it the only, is it in the only portion where it's just like, I'm, I'm pursuing it so much, I'm only pursuing that, that it's preventing me from opportunities to love or help someone else. And then number three, connect with God. And you have these in your notes, and, but, but if you didn't get notes, you're more than welcome to take a picture of the screen. Connect with God. Who might, be, who might he be encouraging you to think about as well as serve their interest? If he brings someone to mind, what's something you can do for that person this week? Guys, I'll say it again. I hope you can continue to experience fulfillment in your life. But just don't stop at yourself because there's too many people out there that need you and need what you have to bring and they need to experience Jesus' love, hope, and grace through you. So if we wanna bow our heads and close our eyes, Adam, you can keep the questions up on the screen just in case they wanna reference that. Reference that. So whether you're looking at the screen or you're with heads bowed and eyes closed, would you take Pastor Steve and his team is gonna be up here in two to three minutes. Can you connect with God right now? Connect with his spirit, heart to heart. He's here, he's near. He's not just out there somewhere, he's near and here right now. Would you take a couple minutes, the gift of time, and connect with him? Maybe there's someone that he wants to put on your heart. And if he does, that's, that's not an accident, guys. He's doing that for a reason. So Pastor Steve's gonna give you about two or three minutes, and then he's gonna, him and the team are gonna close us off with our final song here. <clears throat>